Earlier this month, advocates celebrated Bank of America's decision to abandon plans to charge users for monthly debit card fees. The news came after intense public pressure. But the banks are looking for other sources of revenue, and many continue to profit off some of the most vulnerable people in the country, the unemployed. Alice Olstein reports from Washington. At least 40 states have contracted with Bank of America, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan Chase, and other financial firms to distribute unemployment benefits through prepaid debit cards. And since many of these contracts allow for unlimited fees, the banks are raking in big profits. According to the Western Center on Law and Poverty, Californians on public assistance paid $8 million in surcharges in 2008 and may pay more than double that this year. Ken Edwards from the consumer advocacy group Center for Responsible Lending calls the system predatory. You have an unbanked and underbanked population that is relying on using these technologies, and they have unfortunately been taken advantage of by some prepaid card providers, which, you know, nickel and dime them with fees on the scarce resources that they have. Edwards listed some of the fees unemployed people may encounter when accessing their benefits. Balance inquiry fees, uh, fees for using the cards at ATMs, swipe fees, all sorts of fees. And these are people right now who can ill afford to have their precious resources being gnawed at by the fees that are not transparent. He said the bank's rules often put customers in a catch-22 situation where they're fined for overdrawing, but when they check their balance to make sure they don't overdraw, they're fined for that as well. Prepaid debit cards do have some advantages. Those living on unemployment who don't have bank accounts no longer have to pay a fee to cash their weekly check, and states save by not having to print and mail the checks in the first place. But Maurice M. Salem from the National Employment Law Project says some states got a much better deal than others due to their size and financial know-how. Right now, 50 states are negotiating 50 different deals with a number of different banks. So in one state, there's, there's certain fees on the cards. In other states, there are not. It may be the same bank that's charging fees in one state, and they're not in another state. So, I mean, I think the first step is to make sure that the federal government is more actively involved in helping to negotiate these contracts so that they're getting the best deal for the worker. That's not happening right now. A new report from the National Consumer Law Center found that California and New Jersey negotiated the best deals, with the fewest fees, while Tennessee, which uses J.P. Morgan Chase, had the most fees. In that state, unemployment benefit recipients must pay a dollar every time they use their own bank's ATM, 25 cents for every purchase requiring a PIN number, and 40 cents every time they want to check their balance. And it's not just the unemployed getting hit by under-the-radar charges. Now that the government has eliminated swipe fees paid by merchants and public pressure made major banks back down on monthly debit card fees, banks have had to find other ways to boost profits. Some lawmakers on Capitol Hill are calling on federal regulatory agencies to mandate full disclosure of such fees. Illinois Democrat Dick Durbin recently brought the issue to the Senate floor. Well, certainly we want more transparency, competition, and choice. But in order for that to happen, we need more disclosures so that the average customer of a bank knows what they're getting into. Have any of us taken the time to read the back of that monthly credit card statement? As a lawyer, I can tell you that if you ask for the entire statement concerning fees at banks, it's over 100 pages, almost impossible to decipher. Earlier this year, a study by the Pew Foundation found that banks' checking account disclosure forms clock in at an average of 111 pages. The study also found that checking account users at major banks could be charged nearly 50 different fees on average, and that customers will collectively spend $38 billion in overdraft fees in 2011 alone. Senator Durbin and Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed are petitioning the newly created Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Department of Labor to force banks to adopt a concise fee disclosure form that any consumer can understand. They say their efforts will make bank fee information as easy to find and read as the nutrition label on a cereal box. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington, D.C.